days after the last meeting with Connacht. Um, what are your kind of thoughts and impressions of the game and the way it went? And did you feel that maybe you know, are you happy with the result? Maybe not the performance, or what, what's what's your way of thinking? No, to start with, it, it's always very tough to go there in um, to go away, you know, and 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 I think. Maybe people underestimate how good Connect are, you know, a team, especially in attack, you know, uh, it's probably one of the teams that ask us the most questions to our defense. So um, for us, we were expecting a real, real tough, tough game, you know, and, and that's what we got down there. Um, it came also like uh, we had some passages of, of good, good rugby, but it wasn't consistent, you know, and, and what we try to do is to play 80 minutes good rugby, not uh, some small passages of it. Um, having said that, uh, you can't take out or, or uh, you know, take the credit out of, of what Connacht produced that I think was a, a brilliant, brilliant game. And, and they played really, really well, you know, and, that's, and, and, and they put a lot of effort in, in, in defence as well. So, yeah, it's a hard team to beat, you know. Um, well, the, the the fact that they run it well, you know, because it's not that it's not that they are unpredictable. You can tell what they are going to do, but they do it really well, and that's that's a part of. Um, I would like to think that in ourselves, you know, when they talk about unstructured rugby, we are very structured in a certain way, but we create the, those structures to actually have different options, and then trust on our decision making, and that's what they do, you know, and and. You can see them running onto the ball with a 10 running onto the ball with two two forwards coming um, short of him and then someone at the back. But then you still have to defend it. So it's it's about us um, making sure that we, we work harder and, and better and see those pictures earlier so that we can then go and defend them. But you can't take out the credit of how good they attack, you know. Um, that's the reality. Um, then they've got good players as well, you know, good players that they, they create individuality performance. But um, yeah, I, I think, you know, we were um, definitely, we're not thrilled about, uh, you know, the, the result, but definitely it's a good result for us coming out from there with, with five points. Um, but, but we take it game by game, you know, it's not even that we say, oh, we have a five point advantage, we start five nil. No, we start nil nil and that's our approach, you know, in getting it, going to the next game and, and getting but better. What's going to be different on Friday at the Aviva Stadium if you are to overcome that challenge again and make it to the next stage of the competition? Well, we, we need to be 5% uh, more accurate and 5% and more uh, quicker in, in seeing the pictures in, 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 in you know, we know and, and we expect them to, to come and play a sort of game, similar sort of game with a, a lot of running rugby, running onto the ball. And we need that aggressivity in defense to go and, and just stop their momentum because once they are on their flow, they're hard to stop, you know, and then they work hard. Uh, you can see the backs running, um, working hard off the ball. Um, they know what they want to do. They are very well coached. So yeah, it's it's just don't give them any momentum because they are a good side. Full stop. You know. So if we can get control of the of of, of the game, uh, definitely it will be a different story. We are a good team as well. You know, and they'll have to stop us if we can get in our flow. But. Is whoever can get in, in on top of you know in, in in that sort of managing the game. And just a final question, if you don't mind, it's just away from Leinster. Um, I read recently, and I haven't seen you, so apologies for asking the question. Um, there was a suggestion that you were maybe going to return to to Argentina and link up with the national team there. Has that progressed, or is that just a rumor? Or hey. Are you going to follow Marcelo Bielsa back to Argentina? <laughs> well, I don't know where Marcelo Bielsa is going. I haven't, I haven't read anything. Um, yeah, it's, it's more a suggestion, you know. It's, it's nothing in concrete. So for the moment, there's nothing on there really concrete. And, and, you know, in these big weeks for me, it's more like concentrating on what, what we have to do here. And, and definitely I've got a, 
uh, we've got a lot in, in, well, I've got a lot in my plate, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, it's only suggestions for the moment, yeah. Muchas gracias. De nada. Hi, Felipe. Everything is Joe here from Virgin. How are you? Hi, hi, Joe. It was a really entertaining game uh, on Friday night at the sports ground, and it was a bit of a showdown at times between James Lowe and Matt Hansen, which was really interesting to see play out. But James Lowe, again, he's stepping up. He got two tries. How much of a leader is he becoming in the dressing room and how impressed were you by his performance on Friday night? Yeah, I know. I know he got two tries. and um, But um, I, I, we still think, James, there's a lot a uh, lot more f for him to give, you know, in terms of improvement. And maybe there are little things that that we see the way we want to play and, and, and working off the ball and so on. So there's there's a lot more for him to to give, you know, on for the team, you know. Um, sometimes you, you when, when you analyze and, and maybe we, we see different, but sometimes you analyze um, like matches between James Lowe and Mac Hansen and so on and who gets on top and and it's more analyzing Leinster and Connacht, you know, rather than only two individual players. But um, yeah, I think I think they are both good players. Um, they are good footballers, and and it's it, both Mac Hansen and, and and James. They are capable of doing uh, producing big moments, you know. But for us, it's more of of trying how he he fits in our system more than than only those big moments, you know. Um, uh, and and he's, you know, look, he's he's a different sort of a, a, a leader, different sort of leader than we are used to here, maybe in Ireland, you know, in 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 certain way, because he's a he's a different character, put it that way, you know. Um, so and and it's good to have that diversity, and it's some part of those characters you need in in the team, you know. Um, uh, having said that, I, I would find it really really hard to have fifteen James Lowe, but. With one is enough, you know, so, uh, but it's good to have him, definitely, yeah. The dressing room will be a noisy place. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so, there. I'd say so. <laughs> Just around the point of discipline, uh, Jackson Gibson Park was in bed at uh, the weekend, and across all of the games, it's uh, it's more and more a feature of games that people are getting sin bent or red cards for uh, challenges that are deemed to be high or dangerous. <clears throat> Going into a game on Friday where a yellow card or a red card could determine the outcome of the game, is it a point of focus you'd be speaking to your players about during the week, the importance of discipline in the contact area? Yeah, definitely. But but it's not only like the way it's it's being an, uh, refereed and, and, and um, it, it's not even that it was ill-disciplined, you know. We have to have good gestures. We have to have good technique. We have to lower our tackle because that's at the end of the day today um, whatever you know it's it, if, if it's a head contact contact even if there's no intention even if um, it, it's a lucky or whatever it could be if it's a reckless uh, contact it's it's a red card and full stop you know so you, you need to be aware of, of that and definitely and, and that's where we work and we are working really hard in, in technique, you know, in, in trying to lowering that contact and, and making sure that we we just have, you know, good technique in, in, in our defensive uh, is, uh, performance, you know. Um, I don't think it's, it's ill-discipline uh, what happened there, you know, it's more like part of the game and, and well, you know, you, it's part of how the game is refereed nowadays and you have to adapt to that and, and make sure that you you have the good gestures, you know. So yeah, so it's a technique thing and is that something that you're, you're actually spending time in training working on? Yeah, yeah. your body position lower, not slipping up into a seatbelt tackle or... Yeah, 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 yeah. We have, you know, Dennis Limi, he, he spends a hell lot of time in, in, in all the contact area and... and and working on technique and working on, on good body position in, in attack and in defense, also on the breakdown, you know. So, yeah, it's it's a lot of, of we, we work. Obviously, you have to, you can't be spending uh, all your time on technique, you know, but definitely it's something that we, we work on, on those gestures so, so that we become, we have good habits going into contact, you know, uh, 
in attack and in defense, both sides of the ball. Cheers, Felipe. Good luck on Friday. Cheers. Hi, Felipe. William from Galway Bay FM here. Um, I know we are working at games and we're analyzing them and you're analyzing it from a coach's perspective, but there was a real buzz of that game. People seemed to really enjoy the contest. They didn't get the result they wanted. But does that awareness come through, do you think, to the coaches and the players, maybe eventually, that that was a really cracking game of rugby rather than just a, a, a whole-home normal sort of game of rugby? It, it really got people's attention. Well, yes, I, I think it was it was a cracking game of rugby, definitely. You know, um, for even from us as coaches, when you analyse that, that's how, you know, uh, there, there were two teams, good teams, trying to play good rugby. And that's, that's when that happens when you have two teams that they want to go and just uh, throw punch by punch and, and just play good rugby. Uh, normally you have a, a, and conditions per meeting, you know, it was a, a hell of a day in, in Galway as well, you know. So that played sparks as well, you know, in terms of, um, and, and there was good attitude towards the game from both teams and, and, and I think um, that's what people, if, you're, if, if, if you see it objectively from, from a spectator point of view, a, a guy that just switch on the TV and, and watch a Friday game for, of Champions Cup, it's, it's, it was a cracking game, you know, it was very entertaining. So yeah, it's, um, it's great for, for, for rugby, yeah. able to produce that uh, you know Ulster had a good win Ulster hung on a bit but they've still got the great chance that the overall depth in Irish rugby and the quality of, of particularly of the game in Galway that that's a great place to be for a, for a country that doesn't have maybe the biggest pool of players available no, that's true. They don't have the biggest pool of players, but I think Irish rugby is in a very healthy uh, place at the moment. You know, in terms of the four provinces, the national team playing some great brand of rugby, and and more so producing very good players. Uh, you know, in Leinster, in Munster, in Ulster, Connacht. So, um, yeah, I think the Irish rugby is in a very very good place, and and you know it's. Credit to all the work done by the provinces and 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 by the union as well. You know the RFU um, with with the plan. I think they, it's really really well structured. The professional um, setup here is it's second to none. You know. Felipe, thank you for that. Thank you for your time. Good luck on Friday. We're really looking forward to it. Let's have thank another you. cracking game. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Uh, Michael Glennon. Or Jerry. I'm okay, Mark, because I actually have enough, so if you want to let one, let one do your last Okay, uh, Jerry Curry, please. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, hi, Felipe. I'm um, just wondering, uh, say, with, you know, playing uh, Connacht again this Friday, or uh, uh, two intensive European Cup matches, um, how um, how important is, is the bench in terms of 23 players that you have to bring on? And looking at the scenario with maybe uh, Andrew Porter and um, Ronan Kelleher maybe uh, being available, how important is the uh, is the bench in, in this weekend's game? Yeah, but well, I, I would put it. I, I would make even a, a bigger comment, like how important is the squad? You know, I think it's it's everyone plays their part. You know, um, the. The 23 guys involved in the game, they are the lucky ones, you know, but and it will be crucial, not only the bench, but the starting, whoever starts and, and uh, will need an effort from everyone, you know, and how we prepare to to go on, on business on, on Friday, it's very important. So that's why it's, you know, coming these, these big games, everyone wants to be involved. And when you're not involved, it can come frustration or something and, and you need to leave it apart. and and think on the team first, you know, and, and that's what the guys are doing and, and preparing whoever is lucky to go in there on the pitch, the 15 starting and the other eight guys on the bench, you know, and, and definitely the bench will normally in, in these days, it plays a big, big part in, in, in every game, you know, so yeah, hopefully we will have a, a strong bench 
uh, to be able to pick from. from. Okay, and just um, in terms of playing in the Aviva Stadium again, I think um, Joss there said it's maybe three years since Leinster played a game there. Uh, has that any effect? I mean, the RDS is obviously your home ground, but does playing in the Aviva uh, bring any other pressures playing the game? No, no, not pressure. I think brings joy more than pressure. You know, I think it's it's a it's a great stadium, and and you know, we've been kind of a, a bit on on the on the run at the moment on 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 the route. You know, like playing too many away games, and it was great to 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 play uh, those away games and with uh, with crowds and so on. But now in front of our fans, it will be brilliant. You know, so uh, we are we are very much looking forward to get into that Abiba Stadium and with, with loads of Leinster fans and, and you know, hopefully um, enjoying the moment, more than pressure, enjoying what, what now after, well, the, all the months we've been through and, and, and as Josh said, you know, nearly three years not playing there, um, you know, going back there, it, it will be hopefully a great occasion.